The arrival of a ship into Dili Harbour is a signal of work on offer. Locals clamour for a day's work on the wharf. Reminiscent of past scenes on the Australian waterfront when men scrambled for work and the so-called bull gangs prevailed on the Hungry Mile in Sydney. Unemployment is, uh, is a concern for the, uh, the transitional administration. There simply aren't enough jobs to go around at the moment. But I think that more jobs are being created every day. They get about $7 for a day's work on the dock. But for as long as jobs remain scarce, the process of reconciliation, an important step to nationhood for East Timor, is imperiled. We cannot talk much about reconciliation when uh, we have uh, so much high unemployment because unemployment affects the whole process of reconciliation. In what way? Well, uh, those who have been victimized for so long and cannot find jobs, their mind is not very much uh, willing, you know, to be tolerant, to be patient. So it is extremely important that uh, Australia increases the support for economic development of East Timor. Government aid to East Timor is already the largest humanitarian program undertaken by Australia. It'll total at least $75 million this financial year. Of that, $11 million are earmarked for repatriation and resettlement, including provision of housing. This timber will build shelters to replace the estimated 80,000 houses destroyed before Indonesia's withdrawal from East Timor. But the program is straining to achieve its objectives. The shelter program is extremely complex, cumbersome, difficult. It involves tremendous uh, uh, logistics. Just to give you an idea, in order to meet our modest figure of 35,000 shelter, uh, we need to have a boat arriving every nine days into Dili Harbour. Dili Harbour cannot be multiplied, cannot be expanded for the time being. The timber will be made up into kits with corrugated iron, cement, nails and tools for dispatch to needy areas. Each kit weighs about a tonne and a half and is knocked up into a basic shelter. Two adults and seven children live under this new roof. The shelter program has become a race against the clock. Only 12,000 kits have been distributed and only half of them have been erected. I think much more can be done with the resources that are already available. They're not just blaming, obviously, the international community. They're not talking about our side, uh, the CNRT and the Timorese community. So there has to be much, much better uh, coordination, definition of priorities and empowerment of the East Timorese so that they themselves can uh, address the problems that uh, we face, such as shelter, food and so on. Because right now there are still too many people homeless, too many people without a roof. The collapse of basic infrastructure is still a major impediment to the distribution of shelter kits and other aid. Lack of maintenance and usual wet season damage have wrecked roads and isolated major towns. The transportation system in East Timor is really one of the, the obstacles to the redevelopment of the country at the moment, uh, in particular the road system. Some areas are very fertile, very rich, others have nothing to circulate the goods, to uh, keep uh, other areas from starving, uh, we need a good network of roads. So Australia could help a lot in that regard.
In fact, Australia has recently provided an additional grant in acknowledgement of the basic need to have your, your infrastructure up and running to enable the rest of the, of the um, economy and the administration to function. At least the flood of refugees from West Timor has stemmed, reducing the burden on resettlement programs. More than 160,000 displaced people have been returned to East Timor. This group walked across the border to the town of Batagada this month. But more than 90,000 East Timorese remain in camps over the border. Here in the village of Sakato, near the border, a chief pleads with Jose Ramos Horta to speed the return of missing compatriots. About 40 people from Sakato have not come back yet. In the next village there are about seven families who have not returned, about 70 or 80 people. Now we ask you to help bring these people back. They are literally on the fringes of survival in the West in absolutely despicable conditions. On top of that, they are cut off from meaningful information or balanced information and they are subjected to ongoing manipulation, ongoing intimidation. For those who've made it back to East Timor, the road home is often rough and arduous. This route tracks close to the Indonesian border. Returnees are dropped as near as possible to their former villages with basic supplies of food rations and building materials to sustain them. It's in Dili, though, where desperation seems most apparent. The capital city has lured many from the country anxious for work, desperate for food. And relief agencies like Community Aid Abroad are mindful of accompanying risks. Rubbish is piling up in the streets. It's becoming a disease hazard, a real health hazard. Mosquitoes breeding rubbish, um, kids are playing near it, uh, it causes diarrhoea. It's really important that uh, some ba the basic infrastructure of ru rubbish collection is started. East Timor's slow path towards recovery and self-government was smoothed last weekend when 30 donor countries, including Australia, pledged an extra $16 million to meet budget commitments for the coming year. Late last year, $520 million was promised. And in spite of the enormous task ahead, the interim leadership of East Timor tries to project a bright future for the long term. East Timor will be prosperous, rich, and uh, John Howard would be travelling north, requesting humanitarian assistance from the rich neighbour to the north. And because Australia has been very generous to us now and in the next few years, we will oblige, we will help our poor neighbours from the south. 